All right, folks, buckle up because we're diving headfirst into international diplomacy, and let me tell you, it's about as graceful as a hippopotamus in a tutu. Picture this, nations acting like kids on a playground, but instead of swings and slides, we have ships and submarines. Countries, much like toddlers, love to squabble. They argue, they push, and they shove, each one trying to assert dominance over the other. But instead of fighting over toys, they bicker over territory, resources, and who gets to be the loudest voice in the room. It's a high-stakes game of King of the Hill, but the hill is made of water and oil. Remember those playground arguments about who called dibs first? Yeah, well, imagine that, but with warships, strongly worded letters, and enough tension to power a small city. It's like a never-ending game of tag, but with much higher stakes. And the current playground spat? Oh, just your average territorial dispute in the South China Sea, this time featuring China and the Philippines. It's a classic case of my sandbox, my rules, but on a global scale. Hold on to your hats, folks. This one's a doozy. The waves of tension are crashing hard and the stakes couldn't be higher. Stay tuned because this maritime drama is far from over. Now, the South China Sea. Sounds lovely, right? Palm trees, crystal clear water, probably a delightful floating tiki bar or two. Wrong. It's basically the geopolitical equivalent of that scene in every action movie where the hero has to disarm a bomb while dodging lasers and fighting off ninjas. Everyone wants a piece of this sea. We're talking China, the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and even Taiwan are all jostling for control. Why? Oh, just your average reasons, fishing rights, oil and gas reserves, and those oh-so-important shipping lanes. You see, folks, whoever controls the South China Sea basically controls a significant chunk of the world's trade. So, naturally, things get a little... tense. Now in one corner we've got the Philippines, holding onto a tiny speck of disputed territory known as Second Thomas Shoal, part of the larger Spratly Islands. Think of it as the world's most awkward game of King of the Hill, except the hill is barely visible at low tide. This time, the drama centers around Sabina Shoal, another tiny speck in the vast South China Sea. China, in its infinite wisdom, has decided it wants Sabina Shoal. Why, who knows, maybe they're collecting them like those limited edition commemorative plates your grandma used to buy? Section 4. Red lines in the water, China draws a line in the sand. But, it's water. China, never one to mince words or warships, has issued a stark warning to the Philippines, essentially saying, back off, this is our sandbar, or shoal. This isn't just a casual warning, it's a serious geopolitical move. They've even gone so far as to draw a red line in the water, which is a bit like drawing a line in the sand, but, you know, wetter. This symbolic gesture is meant to assert dominance and control over the disputed area. Now, red lines are always fun in international relations. They serve as a clear, albeit provocative boundary that says, cross this and there will be consequences. They're basically the diplomatic equivalent of saying, don't make me turn this car around. It's a way to signal that patience is wearing thin. But here's the thing, the Philippines also claims the shoal. This isn't just a minor disagreement, it's a significant territorial dispute. And they're not exactly known for backing down easily. The Philippines has a history of standing firm in the face of adversity. It's a classic standoff, folks, with both sides unwilling to budge, and everyone's holding their breath, and possibly, a life vest. The tension is palpable, and the stakes are incredibly high. Section 5. The Philippines, stuck between a rock and a hard place, that's also a rock. Now, the Philippines are in a bit of a pickle. On one hand, they've got China, a global superpower with a navy that could give Poseidon himself a run for his money. On the other hand, they've got their own claims to the shoal, their national pride, and a whole lot of fish they'd quite like to keep catching. It's a delicate balancing act, like trying to walk a tightrope while juggling chainsaws and live badgers. One wrong move and things could get messy. Section 6. So, what next? Will someone bring snacks or will this escalate? So, what's next in this South China Sea saga? The waters are choppy and the stakes are high. Will China and the Philippines settle their differences over a nice cup of tea and some diplomatic cookies? 
Or will they continue to circle each other like wary sharks? Will they agree to share the shoal and turn it into a fabulous underwater resort? Imagine a place where tourists can snorkel over disputed territories. Or will this escalate into something messier? Military drills are already a common sight, but could they turn into real conflict? Honestly folks, your guess is as good as mine. The uncertainty is palpable like a storm brewing on the horizon. International diplomacy is a fickle beast, kind of like a drunken llama in a china shop, unpredictable and potentially disastrous. One wrong move could tip the balance, but one thing is for sure, the South China Sea is going to remain a geopolitical hotspot for the foreseeable future. The strategic importance of this region cannot be overstated. So stay tuned folks, because this drama is far from over. The next chapter could be even more intense and maybe stock up on popcorn just in case. You won't want to miss a moment of this unfolding drama.